Hey everybody, it is Neely and Baby Levi here coming in for a fun unboxing for you today. About three weeks or so ago, before he was born, uh, Amazon had a sale on the Instant Pot Minis and I succumbed to the deal and ordered one. But of course, I was preoccupied with the impending arrival of the sweet baby boy. So it has been sitting in my closet for the past few weeks, but now Levi is here and I am ready to get this unboxed and introduce you to my other new baby. And how appropriate to have baby Levi here as my sidekick on this video. He will just be staying right here, making sure everything goes according to plan. So first off, I'm gonna unbox this and show you everything that comes in the package. And then I thought I would pull out my other Instant Pots, my eight quart and my six quart, and do a comparison of the size, because I know a lot of you are interested in seeing the difference in size and like how much counter space they take up and all of that. And then um, after that, I thought I would do a batch of boiled eggs instead of, or technically steamed eggs because you're not boiling the eggs in the water. I know, technically steamed. And um, I figured I would do a batch of those in the Instant Pot Mini to show you kind of how many eggs will fit in this tiny, tiny Instant Pot. And that will serve as my water test because it's basically the same thing as a water test, just with some eggs in the pot. So now let's go ahead and get this unboxed. First things first, take the outer box off. Here is the Instant Pot box. I'll show you all the sides. Oops, sorry, baby Levi. Show you all the sides here real quick. Shows you everything that's in the box. And it's got a nice little handle here on top that made it easy to pull out. Let's get this box opened. On the lid here, it shows everything that is in the box, a manual, recipe book, quick reference guide, rice paddle soup spoon, measuring cup, condensation collector, steam rack, and then of course the Instant Pot itself. So on top here, it has the paperwork. Here is user manual, and this is an updated manual from the ones that I got. This is for the Duo series. I have um, Instant Pot Duos, but they're in earlier versions, so I don't have this uh, manual, so I'll be looking through this to see what they have added and um, if there are any changes to the manual. And here is the recipe book. It says fourth edition. I'm, the cover looks different than the one I have, so I expect it's gonna be a little bit different too. So again, I will be looking through that to see what, um, what differences, what changes that they have made to the recipe book. Here's a quick reference sheet with um, all the different, let's see, buttons and um, things that you might see on the display. Then we have the utensils. These are the same as with the other Instant Pot Duos that I have gotten. There's the rice paddle and there is a ladle and it has this little hook on here that you can also hook onto the side of the Instant Pot. Then it comes with a rice cup. This is not equivalent to a one cup measurement that you might be used to. This is a rice cup, which is about three fourths of a regular cup. Then over here, the last thing is the condensation collector. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take apart everything I can take apart from the Instant Pot here so that you can see how it all fits together. First off, the lid. So here's what the lid looks like, top and bottom, and there are several removable pieces here. First is the weight that comes right off. A lot of people are worried that it's kind of jiggly and loose and that it can come right off, but that's the way it's supposed to be, so don't be concerned. And when you're cooking, you put this to the ceiling mode if you're doing a pressure cooking pressure cooker setting, or you can move it to venting mode if you wanna release the pressure or if you're doing like a slow cook. So I'll take that off. And then on the bottom here, you have your silicone ring that pops right out for cleaning. And it looks just like that. Then this little cover comes off also for cleaning if you need to, whoa. Usually they're really hard to get off, but that one came off really easily. But that's what the little cover looks like. 
And so you can take that off for cleaning. And then occasionally you'll want to clean your float valve here. And it's really simple. You just take this little silicone piece right off the bottom. Definitely don't lose this because you, it won't come up to pressure without it. But you can take that off and then the little float valve comes right out. So those are all the components of the lid. And now to the pot itself. So here is the little trivet that comes with the Instant Pot Mini. And I have heard some people complain that it doesn't have handles like the ones in the bigger Instant Pots do. So if you're wanting to be able to easily pull, like if you're cooking with the pot and pot method and you want to easily be able to pull your pot out, maybe use a foil sling um, where you just you make a strip a thick strip of foil that you put under your pan and you're able to pull it out easily with that since you don't have the handles on your trivet and then here is the inner pot and it is just the cutest little thing so this is of course the three quart size the instant pot mini is three quarts but you do need to remember that if you're doing pressure cooking you don't want to um, fill it up more than two-thirds of the way and they do have that uh, on the inner part of the pot pressure cooking max two-thirds and they have a line for you there and then in the bottom here they have a little a little warning paper that says make sure the heating element is free from grease and debris do not leave food on the heating element yes definitely don't put food in here without the inner pot that will ruin your Instant Pot, don't do that. Uh, use only genuine Instant Pot inner pots for cooking. Remove card before use, of course. So that is the Instant Pot all taken apart, and now I will assemble it all for you. First thing, of course, is putting the inner pot in. I'll go ahead and put my trivet in the bottom, so if you're wanting to steam something or cook something pot in pot, you would put your trivet on the bottom like that with water underneath whatever you're cooking and that the steam will be what allows the Instant Pot to come to pressure. And now I will reassemble my lid and that just pops right back in to the ring around here. So there it is, all in place. You just kind of have to use your fingers and pop it all the way around in there. I'm gonna put my cover back here. And now my float valve and my little silicone stopper. Just gonna drop my float valve in like that and pop the silicone stopper right on top just like that so it can't fall out. And then the last thing is just the weight here. And it just sits right back on there and can go back and forth between sealing and venting. Now I'll put my lid on my Instant Pot and show you where the condensation collector goes. Here's my little condensation collector and it goes right here, it pops right in on the back there and it does not fill up very often. I rarely have to empty the condensation collector just every once in a while. It'll get some in there so check it every once in a while so it doesn't get doesn't get gross. And then the cord let's see plugs in right here just like that. And the instant pot is fully assembled. Now real quick, I wanted to show you how the ladle and the rice scooper work with the Instant Pot. First off, you can lay your rice paddle on the counter and it has this little foot so it keeps the paddle part off of the counter to keep things clean. Also, the little divot here can allow your rice paddle to sit right on the edge of the Instant Pot if you're serving rice from your Instant Pot. And then the last thing about the rice paddle is that it can stand up on end as well. So many options. Then for your ladle, it has this little hook on the end so that you're able to rest it right on the edge of the liner so that it doesn't fall in to your Instant Pot. It comes in handy sometimes, just like that. You can also, if it's clean, you can hook it on the side of your Instant Pot if it's on a buffet line or something like that. I wouldn't want to do that if it was dirty 
I'd want to keep it in the Instant Pot for sure if it was dirty. So there you have the unboxing. Now let me pull out my other Instant Pots and show you a size comparison. So here are all three sizes of Instant Pots. I have my eight quart over here, six quart here, and the new three quart here. So I hope that gives you a good visual of size comparison. I'll go ahead and pull out the liners on all of them so you can see the difference in size of those. There's a quick view of how they compare in height. My plan with my Instant Pot Mini is to just keep it on the counter. It's so small that it can stay on the counter and I can cook boiled eggs. I like to do soft boiled eggs in the morning and those I can't do in big batches. It takes up so little space that um, it'll just be nice to have sitting on the counter and available for doing eggs or reheating or small batches of rice here and there. Um, that's my plan for it and definitely look for more videos coming from me on what kind of things I cook in the Instant Pot Mini because it is so small you can't cook a lot of the same things that you're cooking in these big pots, not a lot of the huge um, recipes or big whole chickens. You're gonna have to cook a lot smaller things in here, of course. I wanted to quickly show you the manual because it has the different specifications of the Duo Mini 3 quart the six quart and the eight quart that I just showed you. If you wanna know um, the dimensions and the weight, let's see, and the wattage. So definitely take a screenshot if you're interested in that information, if you need to see how a specific uh, pot will fit in your kitchen. So now I am ready to make some hard boiled eggs. I am going to add one cup of water to the bottom of my silver liner, making sure I have my silver liner in before I put water in my Instant Pot. And I did want to mention that the manual says to have a minimum of 18 ounces of liquid in your Instant Pot, but notice that this is a user manual for all three sizes of Instant Pot. So with the smaller Instant Pot, the general consensus on the Instant Pot Facebook page is you only need one cup of liquid um, minimum in order to cook. And also I wanted to mention that the minimum amount of liquid does include liquid in the foods that you're cooking. So oftentimes if you're cooking meat, meat releases a lot of liquid while it's cooking. So that liquid does count towards the minimum. So if you find a recipe that has only half a cup of liquid or a fourth of a cup of liquid added to the recipe, it's probably because some of the ingredients in the recipe have liquid as well and that counts towards the minimum. So I put in my one cup of water into my inner liner. Now I'm gonna add my trivet to the bottom and I'm gonna see how many eggs fit in here and I am noticing that this trivet has some big holes so some eggs might fall through. So we'll see how this goes. I can definitely put them around the edge here without them falling through. Four, five, six, uh, they kind of touch the water, but they don't touch the bottom of the pan, so they should be just fine. I have eight in there so far, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I can easily fit 12 eggs. I might even be able to squeeze in a couple more, but I'm just gonna keep it at 12 for now. And that puts me close to the pressure cooking max. So we will do 12, that's pretty good. You can still cook 12 hard boiled eggs at a time. I'm putting on my lid. Now up here I want to make sure that my valve is set to sealing and not venting. And there are many different methods for cooking hard boiled eggs in the Instant Pot and you kind of have to experiment and find what works for you and for whatever altitude you're at. The altitude can affect how things turn out in the Instant Pot. For me what I have found is I like to cook my eggs on high pressure for six minutes and then do a quick pressure release and quickly get them into a container of ice water and let them completely cool off there and they are perfect for me. If you try that and it doesn't work for you, definitely experiment, add a couple of minutes, take a couple of minutes off until you find what works for you in your area. So to cook on high pressure, I'm gonna press the pressure cook button and the Press the minus button until I get down to six minutes. And you can see the high light is lit. 
You can change the pressure level by pressing the pressure level button, but I want it to be on high. And now I will let it come up to pressure. Once it is at pressure, the little pressure valve will pop up and I will see it flush with the top of this plastic part here. And then the six minutes will start counting down. And as soon as the six minutes are up, I will come back and show you how I release the pressure quickly. One other thing I wanted to point out while the Instant Pot is coming up to pressure is these lights on the different buttons. You can see on the pressure cook button that I had pressed to start the program, it has a red light and then on the keep warm button, it has a yellow light. And what that means is whatever has the red light is what the Instant Pot is doing right now. And as soon as that is done, the thing with the yellow light will start. So there is a way to switch it so it won't move to keep warm mode when the pressure cook time is finished, but right now I have it set on the keep warm mode coming on as soon as the pressure cook time is uh, done. I know these lights confuse a lot of people because you want it to be pressure cooking, but then you see the light above the keep warm button and it's, it's a little bit confusing, but yellow just means that's not what it's doing right now, but that's what it will do as soon as it's finished with the cooking program. You can see a little bit of steam starting to come from this part right here. Pretty soon enough steam will build up that the silver pen will pop right to the top there and it will be pressurized. The Instant Pot just finished its cook time and I'm gonna hit the cancel button to turn off the keep warm mode because I don't want the eggs to keep cooking. And I wanted to point out real quick that now that my Instant Pot is running and I'm about to do a quick pressure release that the baby is nowhere near the Instant Pot. Definitely use common sense when it comes to babies and kids with pressure cookers. Now I'm gonna do a quick release. A lot of people are intimidated by this but it's really very, very simple. You just wanna make sure you don't have any part of your body directly over the vent when um, you open the vent because hot steam is going to come pouring out of there and you don't want to burn yourself. So I am just going to come up from the side here and put it to the venting mode and wait until all the steam is released and the little silver pin drops back down. There it goes. I have my ice water all ready and I am going to drop these eggs in there as quickly as possible and leave them in for at least five minutes or until I get to them. Just want them to be fully cooled. Sometimes the eggs crack just like that, but they crack, it seems, at the very end of cooking and uh, so egg whites don't usually seep out. It usually, It's like the Instant Pot is peeling your eggs for you. See, that one has a crack as well but it's just gonna make it super easy to peel. And some people think that the Instant Pot has nothing to do with how easy the eggs peel, and it's just because you put them into the ice water that makes them really easy to peel, but I beg to differ with that because like you can see, those other ones, they're just falling out of their shell even before they're plunged into the ice water. There's definitely something about the pressure cooking, whether it's the pressure or the steam itself, that makes the eggs super, super easy to peel. Okay, let's see how these eggs turned out. Get this peeled real quick. You can see how easily the peel comes off. Take off big chunks of peel just like that. So easy. And let's cut into it. And that is pretty near perfect right there. No gray ring whatsoever and the yolk is fully cooked. So that was my Instant Pot Mini unboxing and demo. I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again real soon.